Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. So in the last tutorial we spoke about or we actually made this HX711 schematic symbol. Uh, now this symbol is quite lonely. It did, does need a footprint. Like you can see there's no footprint. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how to make a PCB footprint, link it to a schematic symbol like this one and then use it on a PCB. If that sounds good, if that sounds like something you want to learn, you came to the right place. Uh, give this thumbs up if it was helpful. Please subscribe. It helps us a lot. And it just shows that the videos we are making is actually helpful to people and you guys are learning a bit from it i hope uh, let's get started if you have not watched the schematic creation of this creation of the schematic symbol yet i would advise you to go watch it i'll put the link below and then you can make this and join us further um, or you're welcome just to stay and watch right <laughs> so like we spoke earlier uh, to create a library of file new so we went library, we went, made the schematic library, now we're going to do the PCB library. Click on it. So this is the same, same as schematic library where you can have more than one component in your library. So a library is just like a bookshelf and you have many books in your bookshelf. Now you'll have many components in your library. So in our library we called it Plumpot, file, file. Is it going to freeze? I hope not. File, save as, and then we call it the Plumpot library. And then you can see I can add components as much as I want. Uh, but we're just going to make one. We're going to make the HX711. Uh, load cell amplifier. Uh, and then you can see it's mechanical. Um, if you want your bomb or not in bomb, it's just a standard component. Um, this is moles. Normally I like to do it in millimeters but we will change the setting now. Uh, this heart is just important if you're going to have boards on top of each other. So Altium does take that into account. If let's say I've got a daughter board that I click together with connectors, uh, it will see that if there's any collisions, things like that. So the heart can be quite important in that sense. What we normally do first is we always look at the data sheet. So here's the data sheet of the HX711. So many times for a component at the bottom of the data sheet, you will see either they show you how to root it in your PCB, they'll give you the schematic, how to connect it, but at the bottom they normally give you also how the PCB footprint should be. In this data sheet they did not do that because it is actually a generic package. So HX711 is a SOP16 package and that's a generic package. Altium can actually create footprints for you um, using a wizard and then you don't have to do what we're going to do today but today we're going to focus on you making it yourself we'll go through the wizard on another video so if you want to see that subscribe hit that bell you know the drill so what we normally do is i will just copy this and paste in google and say uh footprint because it's generic and then you'll see many many pop up so i've used this one for my keycad example so you can see the footprint, footprint dimensions. So always just double check, does this make sense? So my pitch is 1.27. Uh, if we look at this, my pitch is 1.27, 4.6 in between there. This is 6, 3.9. So 4.6 can be correct. And because if you look at the pads, because if you look at the pads, it's actually not at that edge. It has a, goes down and then out. So 4.6 does make sense. Um, 0.7 1.1 this pad is 0.48 so it's always a bit bigger so you can solder it um, so yes this all makes sense so we're going to use this as a reference now that we have our footprint that we use as a reference um, there's different layers that's quite important in pcb design so the top layer where your copy is where your pads are going to be your top over layer and your mechanical layer keypad layer so top layer is your sulk where all your text will be uh, what you'll physically see on your pcb and then your keypad layer if you don't want any tracks in a certain area also the top paste so your top paste is where your stencil of the manufacturer is going to be if you're going to make stuff at home sold at home it's not that important it's when they populate it or create a stencil and they use a stencil with their solder paste So let's get started. So normally what I do is I first create a mechanical uh, layer, place line, 
and this mechanical layer I normally make the same size as my body. So if I look at my body here, I will make my mechanical layer uh, 6 by 9.9 .9, just so that I don't put any components in that area or close to that area. Uh, because you can set Altium to create rules that your mechanical layers will not uh, be close enough to each other for a certain, a certain distance. So it's good for rule setting. So what do we say? We said 9.9 .9 and 6. You can see it's moles. I don't like moles. If you push Q, Q for question, and then it should be millimeters. And then we place another line, and this was 9.9, 9.96. We can just copy this. There we go. Um, you want your center point always to be in the center. We'll get to that um, later on. Uh, that's important because your pick and place machines and manufacturers actually uses the center point to know where the nozzle must pick up the component. So sometimes for components you don't want it in the center. You so this indicates where the nozzle is going to pick it up of the pick and place machine. But it, again, if you're doing it at home just for a hobby, this is not important. So now I've got my mechanical out layer. Now I want to create my pads. So for pads, I push P and I've got a pad. But now you can see I don't want a circular pad. I would like a rectangular one. So and I only want the top layer. So only one top layer because it's SMD components, not through hole. And then do we have a rectangle here somewhere? Yeah, we can choose rectangle and that is our pad. Our pad we said is 1.1, 1.1 by 0.76. And that's our pad. So this is where the numbers are important. So you see this designator is one, ah, oh, seven, sorry. This is what I spoke about, the one, two, three, four. I have to make sure that my pin one and this pin one is the same. And that's important. So I'll create this as one. And we'll keep going down like this. There's eight on each side. There's four. So now we know with our pitch is 1.27. So that means this must be 1.27 from each other. Um, let's just make sure that the positioning here, you can see X is where we are now. So let's just make it 3.5 minus 3.5. And then all this must also be minus 3.5. So they line up. There we go. So if this is 4.3, let's just make it 4, 4. Good. So then it should be plus 1.27. What you can do to make this simpler as well, because yeah, I don't want to keep adding 4 plus 1.27, 4 plus 1.27. I can make my center point, I change my center point. So if we go edit, set reference, center. Uh, it's not snapping because of this. That means this is my location where with respect to my position. So you can see X is naught. So yeah, I can make that minus 1.27. And we're perfect. So now I can actually do the same. I can actually do it by E. So E for edit, set reference, location. So I can go E, F, L, and then it will pop up. So then I do the same, zero minus 1.27. And I can just keep doing that. E, F, L. This just makes sure that everything is perfect. It's very important that you guys follow the data sheet. So let me finish this and then we can go further. Now we have to get the pads on the other side as well. Um, so what I normally do is I'll copy all this and just paste it with a certain distance away from this. Um, so they give a distance 4.6, but we always at the center. So you can see we're the center of the pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste it by 4.6 plus the 1.1 because you have to take this half and this half into account. Guys, this is just the way I do things. There's always more than one way of doing a component. So let me know at the bottom what you guys do, how you guys attack it, attack this problem. Um, again, it's all preferences. We all get to the same place. So what I'll do is I'll just take this and I'll copy it with respect to zero. So I push jump reference. So now it, there I push enter. And now I can control V and I say jump location and I can set where I want to paste this. So I can go 4.6 plus 1.1 is 5.7, and that's in the X. 
uh, yeah, so 5.7, why I want the same, so you can see, and there we go. Ah, don't move the mouse, that's a mistake. Enter, and you can see it doesn't seem like it's right, but remember, this is much bigger than the actual component. Uh, we'll sort it out, but let's see what the distance now is. Remember, you guys, we have to change the ref pin numbers. That's very important. 1615. But let's just make sure the footprint is like that. Always go to your data sheet, guys. Never worry too much. You can see there. So you can actually see uh, there's one, two, three, four. So we're creating this 1615. So 16 is in the top right. So let's do that. So this mechanical layer will not um, yeah, have any impact in the design. It won't, it won't shown on the PCB, should I say. Well, as you can see, the pads are a bit bigger than the output of this uh, leg here because you don't want your pad to be underneath it. You always want your pad to be a bit bigger. So it makes sense that it pushes out a bit. We should probably increase the mechanical tolerance as well then. So another important aspect is to indicate pin one because when you receive your PCB, you won't know should I place my component this way or should I rotate it 180? Where is my pin one? To do that, I create a circle. And there we go, I created a circle. If I push three, okay, you can't see it, but there it is. Um, so what I also like to do is, I just like to create the body also on the overlay, just a preference. So the body is 3.9 by 9.9. .9. So if I go to my overlay, place a line, 3.9, 9.9. .9. And that's actually how the size is of the real body. And then I can move it. I'm gonna import the 3D step file as well, so we can make sure everything is perfect. This is all cosmetic for you to uh, know where to populate, how to populate. The most important for technical aspect is to make sure that your pads are the right distances apart, the right thickness, right length. That is what the component will be on. Um, this all sulk and everything is for you to know where the component goes and it's just a better design. So what we want to do is we want to lock all our pads as well because we don't want to accidentally move it now while busy adding the final touches. So I just highlight everything and I push lock. That's important. Now I can't move it by accident. So I spoke about this center point. So what I normally do is in the mechanical layer, I just place a line on the corner Shift space will allow you to do this. So if I push shift space, I can do fancy lines. And then that's my center of my component. So I push edit, set reference, F, and then location. And I'll choose the center of this. So that's the center point of my component. That is where the pick and place will pick it up. Uh, yeah, so we could have been more technically making sure if, if it, if everything's exactly right uh, but that's the method I would do to calculate the center point of my component. So what we can do now is we're going to add a step file so we can actually get the real part on this and it gives us a real life look into will our footprint actually work does it match the body of the of, of the component it just gives us reassurance that oh, we are on the right track. So first we have to download the footprint. Um, so normally I go to GrabCAD and I download it from here. So SOP is actually the same as a SOIC 16. So I'm just going to use this one for reference. It looks nice. So let's see how it looks. Um, yeah, so always save it in places where you know where it is. Now that we have our step file, we can put it out here. We say place 3D body and then we go here and choose where we saved it. And the step file is up. So it looks a bit strange because it's probably rotated. So if we push three, we can see it's not quite nice. So yeah, we can rotate it in different directions. I never know exactly <laughs> which direction is which. So I just change this always like this. So that seems nice. Now we don't know if it's upside down. No, it's not. So we can actually move it. So you can see that it looks quite good. But pin one is probably here. So let's rotate it so we can move it. Yeah, that looks nice. So this just gives us a nice reassurance that <laughs> that is too low. So let's lift it up. Stand off height one. So that looks pretty nice. So this gives us reassurance that yeah, when we order a component, it's gonna fit quite nicely. Save, always save. So that's it, guys. Um, this will work now. We now I have to link it to a schematic. 
Um, just a question I regularly get is, what about the bottom layer? So if I want to use this component on the bottom layer. So when you create a component, you only have to create a component for one layer. So we chose the top layer. You mostly always do it like on the top layer. I've, I've never ever made a component on the bottom layer because once you take it to your PCB, you are just push L and it will automatically go to the bottom and invert what needs to be inverted. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. If you do through all, do through all. If you do SMD, just keep it on the top layer, on the red layer. I hope that makes sense. Great, so now we have our footprint, it looks quite nice. Um, but now we need to link it to schematic. So like we did earlier, we can actually take it in our example we had here. But first, let's go to a plum pot. And here you can see at the bottom here, I can add a footprint. Add footprint. And hopefully when I browse, I can see my plum pot library. So I push OK, and now it is linked to, it has a footprint. So save. I always move my libraries to the project I'm using. So you can see my libraries are there. So when, if I go tools, I design, do, 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 do. I don't have a PCB guy, so let's file new PCB. Always give it the same name as your schematic. And now, now it's linked, always save. So now if I go design, update PCB to schematic. Yes, so why didn't that work? The reason for that is I already had my foot my schematic in my sheet, but I made a change to the schematic library. So here I should go right click and update my part actions, update select from library, and you can see there's been an update. So I just say next, please update. Now I'm just going to modify it, execute, and now if I go design update, you can see it wants to add it. And there we go. There is my nice footprint, U1, everything. If I go three, it looks so nice. We just made this together. And how easy it was, it was not difficult. So in the first video we made this, now we made the PCB footprint, we linked them together, and now you can use it. Um, so now I've got my libraries, so all footprints I create, I create one library. Uh, just to let you guys know, I do have a GitHub um, account where I put all my code, all my designs, all the libraries that I make. So all the footprints I make, I share as well. I'll put the link below, guys. So you're welcome to use all my designs as you please. All the footprints that I make, use in your projects. Please feel free to do that. Just so you guys can, it saves time, right? So why must you recreate something I created? Um, but yes, that's it. So. I hope that was helpful guys. So what we did in two separate videos just to shorten it is we created a nice little schematic symbol and we created the footprint for it. We linked it together and then we put it on a real PCB as you can see here by pushing three. So you can push put wires here and stuff like that. But that's for another day. Then you can play connect the dots. Great guys, if that was helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and comment just say hi, what I can help with. It just gives us more motivation to know that we're actually helping someone, or yeah, even if it's just one person that can find value out of this, it's good enough for us. Guys, a fantastic day. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time, guys. Bye.